and squirrels, I hope you're all well. It's Becca here with another EcoCraft tutorial and today we are going to be making beeswax wraps. Okay, so let's get started with your kit and ingredients. So you're going to need an iron, preferably an old one if you have one, a baking tray, again an old one that you're maybe not using for cooking, some baking paper or greaseproof paper, some material scissors and as you can see here I've got a towel underneath my baking tray because you want to be careful about what surface you're doing this on top of. Then to the main ingredients you're going to need some beeswax, either a solid chunk of it like this and a grater or pellet form and then you're also going to need some pine resin as well as some jojoba oil or any other oil like coconut oil or olive oil and then lastly you need some material so I like to use bed sheets or pillowcases they're a really good thickness they're quite thin and they often got quite a high cotton content ideally you're looking for hundred percent cotton so if you've got any nice scraps of fabric laying around that are hundred percent cotton then they are perfect So we're going to begin by prepping our material. So for this size baking tray, it's a great idea to start out with um, just an A4 size beeswax wrap. So I just use an A4 sheet of paper. I will take my material, lay it out on a flat surface, use this template as a guideline. You can cut quite roughly to begin with because you can always neaten it up afterwards. So once you've cut out your piece of fabric, just pop that and the A4 piece of paper to the side because it's time to prep your baking tray. So what I've done here is I've cut two pieces of baking paper, just a little bit bigger than the baking tray. I'm going to take the first one, I'm going to lay it onto the baking tray and I'm just going to press it in to the corners. And then I'm going to take my piece of material and lay that on top of the baking paper. Like this. Now it's time to get our main ingredients on there. So if you're making lots and lots of beeswax wraps, it's much easier and quicker to use the pellets. I try to get these from a local supplier and source them as sustainably as possible. So there are no exact amounts and quantities for beeswax wraps, um, the way we do them anyway, because I'm using different material each time and each material seems to have a different amount of absorbency. But I always start off with less is more because you can always add more. So I'm going to start by sprinkling on the beeswax pellets and I'm just making sure I've got some all over the material. But that is probably enough to begin with. So when you think about the ingredients, the beeswax is for sealing. So that's what's going to create the seal on your beeswax wraps. The next ingredient, the pine resin, which is optional, but it really helps to create that tackiness so that the beeswax wraps can stick around bowls or to itself and not come apart and peel open. So the pine resin is just a really fine powder. It's what gymnasts and circus performers use on their hands so they can um, grip onto the equipment. Um, and we're just gonna take a really small amount of this, probably about a third of a teaspoon for this size wrap. I'm just going to sprinkle it really gently across the wrap. Try not to get big lumps of it because if you get a big pile of it you'll tend to find that your wrap, wrap will crack in that area. So just sprinkle it across like this. Again less is more at this stage because you can always add more if you think you need it. And then the final ingredient is actually to help these two ingredients not to crack so much. So it's an oil of some kind. I've got a jojoba oil here because I find that works really well. And I'm just going to dot some of the oil across 
the wrap. Now you can also use olive oil or coconut oil, but try not to use too much of that because that can get a little bit greasy. So we've got the material, we've got our three ingredients on, the beeswax, the pine resin, the jojoba oil. We're now ready to get to the exciting bit. So now my iron is on, just warming up at quite a high temperature and I am ready to put my next layer of baking paper over. So similar to the last one, I'm just going to pop it on there and press it down into the corners. And then when my iron is hot enough, I'm going to take it like this. Good news is you don't need any ironing skills whatsoever because initially you're just going to be pressing and holding. Move it a little bit, press and hold. This is just allowing those beeswax pellets or grated beeswax, if you use that, to start to melt before you start pushing it around. So just continue like this. And then when you think most of your beeswax pellets have started to melt, you can start in circular motions just to push the wax around and try to make sure it's covering all of your material. And you might be able to see, depending on the baking paper that you're using, how much of the material has soaked up the wax and whether you're going to need some more or not. So at this point, you can pop your iron down, peel off the baking paper, and you should be able to see if your material is covered. And I can see here I've got a few gaps where I haven't got any wax. So at this point, I'm going to flip over the material and just add a little bit more wax. I probably don't need any of the other ingredients though. And then I'm gonna pop the baking paper back on ensuring that I'm putting it on in the same direction, wax side down, and I'm going to repeat what I did before. So again, once you think all of your wax has melted and you've got good coverage, just go around one more time, right around the edges, trying to make sure that you're not going to get any lumps of wax stuck to the edges or the corners of your wrap. And then hopefully for the last time we're going to remove our baking paper, take the corners of our wrap, gently peel it up and hopefully you've got really good coverage and your wax just start to dry really really quickly. So just give it a little waggle dry. And there you have it, your first beeswax wrap. So your beeswax wrap is a great reusable alternative to cling film in the kitchen. It can be washed, used again and again, refreshed when it starts to get a bit old and soft. And then at the end of its life, if it is 100% cotton, it can be composted or go in your wormery. So thanks for joining us Green Squirrels. I hope you all enjoy making your beeswax wraps. And don't forget to share what you've made. Um, we are Be More Squirrel on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Take care.